Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. If you've been following along for a while, you might know something about our little motor series. And it's a really cool project that should help to make uh, motion control just a little bit easier for the maker, uh, giving us something between something super complex and super expensive that works really well and something that is cheap and doesn't really work at all. So yeah, we're trying to bridge that gap um, in what's available for a hobbyist or a maker like you, and I'm pretty excited about that. And also, we got an amazing question. Um, yeah, this one really came out of nowhere because we get a lot of suggestions, and I'm usually pretty good about reading the comments and responding when I have time. However, this comment really stood out from the rest, and it was pretty simple. It started as a, as a simple question, and I believe it may have come in part from a partnership where I wrote an article that got published with Predictable Designs, but basically they asked me how I learned about EDA tools. Like, how did I learn to use an EDA tool? And that simple question got me thinking. I mean, it's really not that complicated, but it is pretty overwhelming. Like, once you understand how it works, it's simple, but before you get started, you I have no idea where to start. And I remembered back to one class that if you asked me what I learned there, I don't even know if I could have told you what I learned, but it was really how to use EDA tools. It wasn't teaching me how to do anything in particular. It was just showing me how to use an EDA tool. And as I started to think about EDA tools in general, you know, there are a few core pieces of it, like schematic capture, simulation, PCB design, and library management. Those are pretty standard features that are available. And once you learn how they work and their function, it'll be really easy for you to learn any EDA tool, whether that be Altium or KiCad or CIS or anything, right? Any of those EDA tools all have these core features. And once you really understand what you're looking at, it should be pretty simple. So today we're going to make like a little sub-series. <laughs> of course, if you're going to talk about schematic capture and EDA tools, you need to capture something while you talk about it. So we'll be using the motor series, one of the motor modules that we're going to design as our example to walk you through how to use an EDA tool, what are these core features, and hopefully this can be something as like a step-by-step -step supplement to the already existing documentation. For this example, as it probably won't surprise you. We're going to be using KiCad or KiCad. Um, this is an open source tool that's free and available everywhere, I believe. And they have a lot of really great documentation that's already written. So by all means, have these documents ready because I'll be referencing them a lot. But what this series will help to do is serve as like uh, a spot check, right? You can do something on your own. I'll do it. We'll compare notes, right? Every 15 to 30 minutes, I'll give you an example of, all right, if you've been following the steps in the KiCad guide and you're using this tool correctly, then here is what you should see on this screen. And, and hopefully you'll find that really helpful. Along the way, I'll just make sure to talk to you a little bit about how to use the EDA tool, like what's going on under the hood, and um, what you could expect if you might be working in Altium or a different EDA tool. Let's start off in KiCad 6 with some disclaimers. I'm pretty new to this version of the tool, but it was only released a few days ago, which means that I'll probably do something silly because I'm used to limitations in version 5 point, whatever it is I was using before. With that said, this is still a great tool, and just because I'm still relearning all the new features doesn't mean that these are all limitations. Thankfully, I have captured a design that demands at least some of the new features in version 6.0, like filleted traces and hatched ground planes or copper pores. So I do know some of the new features, um, but I'm still getting ahead of myself. So what is an EDA tool? An EDA tool is an electronic design automation tool. And in this video, we're specifically talking about ECAD or electronic CAD programs. These types of EDA tools have a number of common functions, and we're going to walk through these functions in KiCad today. If you're looking to install the tools, make sure to reference the Getting Started Guide in the download page, both of which I've linked in the comments of this video. You have a couple key features here, and they're not necessarily in the order you'll generally need them. I like to go through, and if I know I'm going to need some components, I like to make those right up front. So I'll use the symbol editor to make the schematic symbols and the footprint editor to make PCB footprints. Then when that's done, you can link those 
in the schematic symbol. You can actually tell it to use the footprint. And uh, then I kind of jump into schematic capture. They do give a couple supporting things, like an image converter, which is a little toolkit that allows for converting images into um, like silk screen, PCB footprints. They also have a calculator, which can be helpful if you want to calculate things. <laughs> so they have RF attenuators. That is new. I don't remember that calculator being in here. Surprised they don't have E96. Color code, transmission line calculators, via size, track width, electrical spacing, board glass. So I don't always use this. There's another one that I like to use that's called Saturn PCB Toolkit. For example, if we go to conductor impedance, you can see that it calls out what standard it's using. No, apparently not. Conductor properties. There we go, there we go. IPC 2152. Conductor impedance. I guess that one's just physics. No standard for that one. All right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. Take that for what it is. Saturn PCB Toolkit is another calculator tool that can be used. I really want to show off a feature that we're not going to cover in the future videos. This is exciting and confusing to me at the same time. You might notice that this has a piece by voltage source. Ah, so for example, my experience with tools that can also simulate is more in the CIS territory, but you have to choose which type of project you want. Right now, I believe this is mixed. So I believe this is a simulation enabled project that is also a layout enabled project, which gets weird because like this voltage source I mean, maybe it's like a connector. Maybe it's got some, but it just feels odd to me to mix simulation symbols with piece by libraries and physical symbols. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird there, but feels odd to me. If I go up to inspect, there should be a simulator. But here's the thing that I find absolutely fascinating about the way that they simulated this. And I believe this is different to LT Spice. To be clear, LT Spice is not the end all be all of simulation tools, but it is a notable comparison because they're both free and they're both pretty commonly used. So if we come down here into tune, we can choose a parameter to tune by clicking on the component. We can take this slider and you can see if instead of a 10 mic we had a 14.15 mic. If I come up here to 20 mic, holy cow that was fast. Right on. Okay, that is much faster. <laughs> so yeah, we can tweak this capacitor value and look at its impact on the time constant. You might not need this if you're super familiar with how the circuit works. This is such a simple example. I can't say that it's really the best example. And can we actually pull up multiple things to tune? Oh, we can, and they just show up next to each other. Oh, that is so cool. So we can tweak we can tweak this capacitor. We can tweak R2. You can see that moving it up changes that DC bias point. Changing it down reduces the final value. But you can also see it impacts the time constant because the R is functionally R1 and R2 in parallel, which is super cool. I think this is a great rapid introduction to KiCad. We showed off some of the features. We showed off some of the new stuff that just got launched with the 6.0 release. Demonstrated simulation tool, which I think is really cool. Haven't really used that before. But yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments about mixing your simulatable schematic with your physical schematic and the nuances of adding like voltage sources into a schematic, that, ah, something bothers me about that.
mixing the ideal and the real worlds. It, it just, just feels wrong. It just feels wrong. I hope that you enjoyed this video as we're starting this sub-series. I'm pretty excited about this question and, and I hope that you really like our answer of how to use EDA tools. It's um, simple and complicated at the same time and, well, I like paradoxes like that. So I hope that you really enjoyed, but most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching it for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.